We get a lot of requests to show you what tools that we use while living full time in our RV. Yep, and we're gonna show you right now. When we were getting ready to hit the road full time in our RV, you had to really go through your tools and kind of downsize and figure out what we were going to take with us. Yeah, I had the really big Craftsman toolbox and a whole shelf full of tools. Yeah. So it was a process of going through everything and trying to figure out what I needed. Basically, I took everything that I could fit in the toolbox. Because mm -hmm. at that point, we had no idea what we were going to need. Exactly. So I took everything I could. And if you've already got tools, take everything you can. It was a process of laying them all out and kind of saying, OK, got to have you, got to have you, got to have you. Let's put it all in there and see what else I could fit in. And the things we're going to show you today, it's not like our day one video where you got to go buy these tools before you go full time RVing. Mm -hmm. Maybe a couple and we'll point those out. But take everything you can and then buy a tool when you need it. And that's the best part of a project. Oh my gosh, this project, I need this new tool. Lowe's is to a grown adult man what a toy store was to a small boy. Yeah, true. <laughs> we're going to show you everything that we carry right now after lots of adding and removing and pruning and a new toolbox. And we're gonna start here. And, uh, wait, I'm gonna get out of the way because I don't have any interest in tools. <laughs> this is your thing, I don't need yeah, to be yeah. in it. So I'm gonna stand on the sidelines. She's gonna go direct, make sure I don't mess things up. I tend to screw up a lot and she kind of keeps me in line. And that <laughs> brings me to actually a point that I want to tell you guys about. If you watch mostly our how-to videos, you're gonna see a lot of my face and I'm sorry about that. But Tara is behind the scenes all the time. In fact, she does all of our editing and our channel is a 50-50 partnership all the way. Tara is the one who makes the videos look good. I just stand here and talk. Let's get started and we'll take a look in here. We're gonna start on our passenger side basement. This is where I keep things to have quick access and easy walk out the door, get them and go work. All right, so over on this side, I keep a couple of tubs full of just miscellaneous tools that I know I'm gonna need frequently. You've probably already got one or both of these, basic drill, impact drill. If you've got these, bring them with you. If you don't, you'll probably want some at some point. Why, why are the two different ones? Well, this one's made for drilling, and this one's made for screwing. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I use this especially if I need to drill some self-tapping screws into the frame for some of the projects I've done under there. And this is for other stuff. I eventually want to get down to all DeWalt because DeWalt is sold at both Lowe's and Home Depot. You'll also notice that I've mounted the chargers for both the DeWalt and the Ryobi up here. So I have quick access. And here, of course, I keep some Gorilla Tape and some Gaffer Tape. Gaffer tape is not as sticky as this. So if I need to tape something that I want to take the tape off of and I have a bunch of gunk, gaffer tape is great. I also keep our wood splitting wedge and some various tie down tools for our awnings, for soft ground, for normal ground, not really tools, but in here's some of the fun stuff. So this and this are essentially the same thing. There's always some overlap, but it's always good to have uh, an assortment of screw head sizes and hex head sizes and square head sizes and adapters. And you know, you never know what you're gonna need. So that's why I like these kits with lots of options in them. Now that Lowe's carries Craftsman, I've been getting a lot more Craftsman tools because they're all guaranteed and they're all just really good quality. And where I can, I'll put links below, but again, a lot of these, like Tara said, are just gonna be- You've had for a long time. Yeah, go to Lowe's and you'll find something. Cool. And of course, there'll be less expensive options if you want those, entirely up to you. This and this are all different kinds of drill bits. These are standard drill bits. And I also keep a step bit in here and a punch tool uh, for marking or starting your, your drill. And this is a set of high speed step bits and metal bits for when I have to drill into metal on the frame. Very handy to have. This is just a basic hex key set, metric and standard tools. 
some rags, my glasses, because I'm blind. A good headlamp is a must. I like this one because it's rechargeable. I can plug it right into USB and it's super bright. You actually use that a lot more than I would have ever thought. If I'm working on something, I throw this thing on. It's just, mm. it's just much easier. I did get this on Amazon, so there'll be a link for this below. This is a little mini branch cutter. <laughs> <laughs> So whenever you get into those sites where you've got it in and you're in and it's good, but you got a couple of small branches still brushing your RV, I've got this to get up on the roof and trim those off. I also have this, which is just another set of various driver heads and sizes and hexes and squares. And whenever I go to the toy store, I mean Lowe's, you know, you see this and like, ooh, that one's got cool stuff in it and this is all impact rated uh, which is why I bought this versus the others because I did break a couple uh, with the impact gun had to go down and buy new tools mm -hmm. a laser interferometer which is good for checking temperature this is great for the grill it's great for if you want to check your hubs and bearings when you're pulled over at a rest area you can just shoot this at it and see if one of them is over temp all kinds of uses for this I know right now the camera woo, is 72.4 degrees. This is a really cool little tool I got from Lowe's. It's Cobalt brand, which is their brand. It looks like it's just a regular kind of ratcheting screwdriver. That's normal speed. If I grab this, it like quadruples the speed. And of course it came with yet another set of various oh. heads. <laughs> <laughs> so those could all be used together. But again, out here, real quick, boom, I got a, got a screwdriver, I got a razor knife, just stuff that you're going to need. Scissors. These aren't your normal scissors. These are masculine man scissors. They're not like the pink ones I have in the They're house. not like the pink ones I used to have down here that I would take her scissors from inside and she's like, where are my scissors? So I saw these, I'm like, oh, those are perfect. Those are, oh, yeah. Oh my gosh. This is really cool. It's a nice long stick with a mirror on it and this thing is adjustable. So I can walk around on my T24 before travel day. T24 is our 24 hours before departure. Uh, we have a lot of inspection items like tire pressure and stuff like that. We've got a separate video on that and a blog post with our checklist. So we'll put that link below. But I use this to get under there and inspect our linkages and our, our wet bolts and hangers and leaf springs and all that. And I can kind of look under there and get an inspection. That's it for in here. There's some other stuff in here, but it's not related to tools. It'll be stuff we have in a future video. Uh, other stuff we have in here, just shop towels. We have a whole video on this wash wax all kit for dry cleaning our RV. It's really awesome. Would you consider the ladder a tool? Yeah, I'm gonna get, so now we're gonna go oh. over here. Oh, okay. So you might wanna come on this side now. All right, see, I, I didn't, <laughs> didn't even know. Over on this side, uh, I keep a couple of lubricants out, like white lithium grease. I'll put this sometimes on our hitch or our kingpin before we hit the road on T24. This is a lubricant that Bow Shield sent us. They didn't send us this can, they sent us a tiny little sample can. <laughs> but this stuff's really good. Just to give you an example, I used to have to lubricate our RV lock, our latch for our door, probably about once a week or once every other week because it would get stick and I'd spray some silicone into it and free it up. I sprayed this in there about nine months ago and I haven't had to lubricate it since. It's got some ceramic coating or something. I did get this on Amazon, so that link will be below also. And in here, nothing super important, just lots of miscellaneous. Tubs are great for organizing your basement. There are no tools in here, just various cleaners and lubricants. And, and I do like that you have the clear tubs because you can you can kind of eyeball it and see what's in there without having to. Yes. If it's tucked under stuff, you can kind of take a peek in there and see what's in there. Yeah, definitely get clear tubs. If you want to go really, really crazy, go watch RV Geeks. They have a system where they take every one of their tubs and they like label it and number it and they have a spreadsheet of everything that's in every tub. So whenever they're looking for something, they know, oh, that's in tub 3B or whatever. It's way above what I would do, but you know. But it's those, pretty cool. It's, pre it's, pre it's pretty cool. Uh, so we'll put a link for that below also. 
This is just our benzomatic blowtorch for lighting fires. I saw Mark on KYD using this. I'm like, ah, why didn't I think of that? That's such an easy way to start a fire. He loves this toy. Anything yeah. that sounds like this. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Closet pyro right here. Yeah. Moving on. A three pound hammer. Uh, you're gonna see once we get to the truck, I've got another hammer in there, but this is great for putting in your stakes and things like that. And it's, it's just the right weight to get some good mm behind it. Also over here, I have an ax. I originally got this for splitting wood, but eh, it, it does okay. This thing's lack of ability to cut wood was why I got this. This and the three pound hammer, you can split any log. So do you really use the ax for it? I don't it? use the ax really at all. I keep it around in case I want to ax something, but <laughs> don't use it a lot. And this is another every now and then use kind of thing. It's just a tiny little shovel for obviously little shovel projects. Where I've had to use this is if I'm backing into a location and have to go across grass and cut, our wheels of course drag and just tears the crap out of some grass. So we've had to use this a couple times to kind of dig dirt back into a hole. We've also had to use this to move posts. Remember in the, in the state oh. parks? Mm -hmm. We've had a couple of state parks where we're trying to fit our truck onto the lot, but the little number sign is there. So we relocate it temporarily. I dig a hole, put it in. Got this uh, number sign right by the tire. Ah. Again, not something you need on day one. Just pick it up when you need it and then carry it around like I do. We've had a couple of people say, why do you need a blower? Because we want to blow stuff. <laughs> so this again is a DeWalt tool. Wasn't super expensive. Uses the same 20 volt batteries. But this is nice on T24 when we're up on the roof. Rather than sweeping the roof off or sweeping off our slide toppers, if we have a lot of leaves and branches, I just get up there and blow the thing off. Also, when we do have our rug laid out in the patio and lots of leaves and stuff on it. You know, every few days I'll blow it off. Keeps the campsite nice and neat. We just recently got this ladder. It's a variation of the ladder you've probably seen in our other videos where it's a single telescoping ladder and that works great. The single one works great. It served us well for several years, but whenever I need to work on something that's away from the RV and I don't have anything to lean it on is where it's lacking. Recently I was troubleshooting our awning lights I needed to get up there on the end of the awning with the awning out. And the only way to do that with the single ladder was to lean it on the awning. And that's just bad news. So this works really good. It works as both an A-frame and it also folds out flat. So it ends up being like a bazillion feet long. I've used it a few times now, so I can recommend it. Either of those types of ladders, they're not as sturdy as a solid ladder. I mean, they're telescoping, so they're gonna bend and sway a little bit, but they are solid and sturdy. The A-frame one, can we still use it for when the girls stay over? Yeah. Okay. And I know this isn't a tool, but since you're going to see it, you're probably going to ask about it. You're probably wondering what these crazy things are. And they are lawn drink holders. Put your drink in there. But we don't use them for that. We use them for our tiki torches. This works great with some citronella tiki oil that we also get on Amazon and we'll spread these out and it keeps bugs away pretty well. Oh, I almost forgot. I have these blue fire, blue fire gloves. There's probably lots of different kinds on Amazon, but this is great. You can actually put this thing on, reach right into your fire and grab a log and move it around. Be safe. But I also use this when I am cleaning off the grill before seasoning it and putting it away for the evening or the day or whatever. Uh, but these are, these are good to have. Now we're gonna go over to the driver's side where I keep a tub of some things that are more household related that I don't access very much. If you're wondering, these are RV locks for our baggage doors. We have RV locks all the way around on both baggage doors and both of our doors. Separate video on that. We have the box that you saw in our recent day one video of all the sewer connections. That stays on top, obviously, because I access that all the time. And underneath that, I have another tub. We've got some basic household kind of things for household projects like shelves and desks and those type of things that we've had videos on. It's nothing spectacular. I've got some steel wool, various grits of sandpaper, a little sandpaper 
block, a caulk gun, painting tape of two different sizes, more sandpaper, cheap paint brushes because I don't like to clean paint brushes. I'd rather buy cheap ones, use them and throw them away. You'll need whatever type of leveling sealant is appropriate for your roof. And that's, you know, check with your RV manufacturer, what type of roof you have, what kind of sealant they recommend. Grand Design recommends this Alpha 1021 or Dicor. This is what they actually recommend. And you're gonna want this probably a few months into your RVing if you're gonna be full time. Uh, we'll do a separate video on it, but you wanna get up there now and again and look for any gaps, holes, bubbles, uh, over time, this sealant just kind of moves around a bit. So you, it's real easy. You clean it off with some mineral spirits and you fill it in. But we'll do a separate video on that. I have a couple of uh, tubes of just plain old silicone and these little airtight things to save them so they don't go bad. Aluminum tape for things like ductwork. If you saw our RV maintenance video, you'll see where we actually use this stuff. That's the RV maintenance air conditioning. Yes some stir sticks. Uh, I carry this around because I've repaired our screen before from Little Daisy. These combs uh, go with our AC maintenance to actually straighten out your fins on your heat exchanger and compressor. Just a scraper. And you're probably wondering what this is. <laughs> the whole idea here is to put a can in here and get it on the end of a pole. And then you can spray the can at the end of the pole in case you need to spray something far away. I tried it with our slide toppers uh, underneath it, where I wanted to actually treat our seals for our slides, but they're underneath slide toppers, so you can't really get to them. Jury's out on this. Todd from Two Beards and a Babe recommended this for slide seals treatment. So I'm gonna try that out. And he's an RVIA certified yeah, technician. He, exactly. Yeah. I have a few spare parts in here. I have a spare taillight. I've got a spare thermal switch for our furnace, some extra LED bulbs. I've got the little starter thing for our furnace. I've got a sail switch for our furnace. And we've heard that the little vent caps underneath the sink sometimes go bad and less odors inside your RV. So I got a couple of those, but just a couple of things that I carry around. And, uh, oh, mineral spirits, again. I think that's pretty much it for over here. So a majority of that stuff, though, isn't an essential tool for RVing. This is just what we carry with us. Every single thing in here you do not need well, <laughs> until, the, you, until you need it. Right. Yeah, you don't need this on day one. Okay. Okay, so let's get into the fun stuff in the truck box. By the way, that's a hint for our upcoming toolbox video. <laughs> Tool toolbox and tonneau cover we'll go over next week. All right, so we're gonna start over on this side and work our way over. I have this organized so that I can get to some things on the edges uh, without having to get up into the bed. First and foremost, air compressor. This is something that you need day one because you're gonna to wanna to maintain your tires and you're gonna to wanna to make sure they're the proper temperature every time you travel. That combined with a TPMS is the best way to take care of your tires and know what's going on. So I keep this right here. Bayer makes awesome, awesome compressors. We've had this one for two and a half years. It's never missed a beat. We'll have links below. Of course, I've got some gloves and a razor knife that I keep right here on the side that I can access. Also, what I can access over the edge here is a socket set. So you've probably already got some sort of socket set or tools or toolboxes. Uh, just got this one recently to replace one that was missing some. I also have this little bag here with just an assortment of screwdrivers and wrenches and hex drivers, all kinds of just miscellaneous standard tools. Nothing really spectacular in here except a torque wrench. This is a, a smaller inch pound range torque wrench. This is an item that you, you'll definitely not need until you need it. It's an easy out. We used to use these a lot in the Navy and it's basically a little tool that you can use to get out screws with stripped heads or no head at all. These are great. 
Also in here is a circular saw. This is one of those things that if you've already got one, take it with you, but obviously you don't need it on day one. I do a lot of projects in our RV. I just made some shelves. I made our desks and of course, got to cut wood. Speaking of torque wrenches, I have two more. I've got the big boy here that I will use on lug nuts and things like that. This one I did get on Amazon and this one goes all the way up to 300 foot pounds. You can see it's a, it's a whoa, whoa. did you get it? Yeah, I got it. <laughs> you can see it's a big one. Always remember to zero out your torque wrenches when you're done with them. I also have another torque wrench, just a cheap one. And this one only goes up to hundred foot pounds, but it goes as far down as 20 foot pounds. I think this one only goes down to 50 foot pounds. I also in here have a four way. It's good to have in case you need to change a tire. Now, granted, if we really needed to change one, I would probably use the torque wrench and a socket, but you know, you come across somebody on the road who needs some help and they've got weird lug nuts. This is a good thing to have on hand. I also have a breaker bar. If you don't know what a breaker bar is, you never needed one. You will someday. It's just, again, a big leverage. I've got a couple different straight edges and nineties for again, projects on shelves and things like that. A level, which of course you saw in our measure your RV video. This is one of those box o miscellaneous stuff. In here, I have a tire repair kit. If you run over a nail and you wanna do a real quick and easy fix of that tire, I had never had to use it on our setup, but if I did, I would always get it repatched by a professional because these tires are no joke. Zip ties, fish tape, bungees, a heat gun for electrical work that requires some heat shrinking tubing. I've got a staple gun for miscellaneous projects around the household. I've got a grease gun. This grease gun is called a lube shuttle and it's really cool because these cartridges go in there and they're very neat. You don't have a bunch of grease all over the place. You're not trying to shove grease into it. I use this to lube our wet bolts and our hubs and stuff like that and bearings. But it's one of those things that I haven't done a lot of, uh, so I'm not gonna do a video on it until I'm comfortable with it. Also in here is a very, very important tool for RV work. That's a Dremel tool. If you've never seen a Dremel tool, it's basically a thing that spins really, really fast and it has blades for cutting, for routing, for drilling. It's just a neat thing to have to make miscellaneous cuts. If you saw our RV lock video where I had to make some cuts into the frame to fit in the latches, this is what I used. Of course, I've got along with it, a bunch of accessories and various cutters and drillers and all kinds of stuff. This is a digital caliper for the odd time when you need to measure something really, really tiny. And of course, this is just a drop light and a masonry blade for the circular saw. I use this when I cut the tiles for our fireplace. Again, a lot of tools, you use them once and you stash them away and they're there if you need them again. Moving on down the line here, I have yet another clear container. And this has all of the miscellaneous little tools that just kind of don't fit anywhere else or they're just kind of oddballs. I've got, of course, a giant roll of extra duct tape because you never know when you're gonna have to duct tape something. A PEX line cutter. This is to cut plumbing lines. Along the same line, I have a PEX tool. Uh, this is what is used to actually clamp or crimp the PEX clamps. And I'll show you, I've got some of those. We'll get to that in a minute. Other stuff in here, again, miscellaneous giant sockets for various projects that I've had, various adapters and U-joints and things for sockets. I've got two different pin adapters for the lube shuttle. Of course, it's got a Zerk fitting on one end, but I use this to lube our new Reese M5. But again, the Misfit toys all go in here. Also over here, I have a digital multimeter. Now, there are a number of uses for this, obviously, but if you're going to be doing any kind of wiring in your RV, whether it's DC or AC or whatever, uh, get one of these. You'll need it for that. If you're going to do wiring, you probably already know that you need a multimeter. I've got this one. 
kind of along the same lines, this is a bag of various wiring and networking tools that I've had since my networking days. And I've kept some of it. Probably the only thing you would ever find that you would need is basically some crimpers for electrical. I also do carry a giant hydraulic crimp for the very large cables. You'll see that in our inverter video. And I know you guys can't see me, but don't forget to click subscribe and like this video. <laughs> also, don't forget to click that bell and check us out on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and also our website, changinglanesrv.com. Last but not least, actually two things. One, just a giant crowbar. I don't really remember what I used this for, but I still have it around. But I have three of these types of containers full of miscellaneous screws and attachments and wood screws, metal screws, just every, everything you can think of. If I've bought screws, I put them in here. I've got some, you know, like 90s and things for various projects. I also have a lot of various fittings for PEX. I've got some shutoff valves that I'm going to install on our toilets. You can't go wrong with having an assortment of screws available. Of course, a tape measure. I've got a tape measure here. I've got one in the basement. I've got one in the office. I don't want to have to walk around to find a tape measure. Because it's so <laughs> <laughs> Protective eyewear for whenever you're sawing or doing various projects, you want to keep those peepers safe. And last but not least, a little pack of various fuses. Again, day one for sure. You will blow a fuse. And that's it for the truck toolbox. So we're gonna to get to the toolbox and to no cover because I wanted to really focus on those and go over some of the pros and cons and my evolution of toolboxes that led to this setup that is freaking awesome and I can't wait to show you. You're just gonna have to wait just a little bit longer, but just to kind of fill you in a little bit, here's a little bit of a preview. There's a giant bumblebee. Oh! Just don't move, don't move. Don't oh! move. He'll go away. Don't, don't, sh don't. He'll don't, go away, he's gone. Don't swat him, okay. He's gone, I gave him. You gave him space? Yeah, I gave you him, gave him the, warning? the psychic. Better get out of here, B. Jedi? Um, <laughs> yeah, it's a weird. torque, it's a, it's a measurement of torque. You're a torque. You're a torque. How are short leg people supposed to, how is this helpful? Oh God. Well, it's easy, it's, it's helpful because it's better than getting out of the bed. Oh, my legs. I know, that's why I had to get up. It's also good if you're working at the border, looking for drugs under someone's car. Can't go, every tool, every guy should have a set of good sockets. That's probably weird. Okay. Thanks. Also over here, I've been using these um, Velcro against this, uh, sorry. The whole thing over. Yeah. So let's take a look over. Also over here, so sorry. <laughs> sorry. Why are you laughing at? Shut up. <laughs> nice. Nice. <Okay>. Jeez. <laughs> that thing's heavy. Kind of expected it to be a little heavy, but I didn't expect it to be like, <laughs> yeah. like you can get you can get a workout in. Tools. Yay. <laughs> uh, this. This. Well, you see. can lift it with your pinky. Stop, don't, don't, you don't, don't, don't. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's it over here. That's all the quick access, get to it stuff quick. Sounds stupid. <laughs> We're gonna get to that next week. We're gonna get to that in a couple of weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying it each way. I know. We don't know when we're going to put I it know, out. It was awesome. It just made me laugh. <laughs>